Hey everybody, what's up? It's Joel, aka The Daily Guru, and today I'm here with one of my closest friends on the planet and someone who I have had endless conversations about music with. We debate everything from great concerts to great bands to great albums, and today we have something very, very special for you. Christian and I are going to debate one of the biggest topics of all time. Simply put, which is better, Guns N' Roses Use Your Illusion 1 or Guns N' Roses Use Your Illusion 2? I want to stress one thing. Both of us are huge fans of both albums, but for the sake of argument, we each need to take one to argue it. Christian is going to argue for Use Your Illusion 1, I'm going to argue for Use Your Illusion 2, and we'll see in the end who wins. So for me, when I listen to these records, I always feel like Use Your Illusion 1 seems like they're kind of rehashing the old Guns N' Roses sound that we heard on Appetite and earlier, where Use Your Illusion 2, they almost seem to be looking more into the future, kind of a newer sound. I can agree with you on that. I don't think in this example, though, that rehashing uh, old songs or old ideas is a bad thing because so many bands rehash old ideas and you say to yourself, well, this album sounds like this one before. Right, they make the same album five times in a row. Right, and Use Your Illusion 1, I don't think was a, a, a duplicate of Appetite, but it had the, the same themes and a lot of the same ideas. When I hear the the variety of songs that are on Use Your Illusion 1, I think it's, uh, as an album, that album itself is a total package. I have aggressive songs, I have angry songs, I have ballads, I have Axel or Izzy, whoever wrote the song, I have them directing those feelings and thoughts at a particular person or a situation. It, get, it gets a little loud than the standard ballad, but that was one of the always always the interesting things about Guns N' Roses is they could take the ballad theory and they could rock it out, and that's really what you see on Use Your Illusion too. You have the extended jams. You have things like Estranged is the one that I that I always come to because it's just such a it's such a massive piece of music, and you know I think I think there's at least four tracks on Use Your Illusion two that clock in at over six minutes, which for a quote-unquote hard rock band is is kind of odd territory and, and that's why I feel it's a more more progressive record for them. Angry songs, both albums, yes. Ballads, yes. Do I have lengthy jam uh, songs? Yes. Do I have awesome covers on each one? Yes. But I feel that on the Use Your Illusion 1 side, I when I hear of a song, uh, Bad Obsession, I have the harmonica coming in. Both albums, but more I think on, on one. I think the biggest thing that you find in both Use Your Illusion records is that they've almost completely abandoned the drug song where, you know, most of those first two records in EP, that's all it is. It's a bunch of, it's a bunch of drug songs where, you know, they're, they're, it seems that Axel has, has become a more introspective writer in some ways. And it on the, on the Use Your Illusion 1 side though, you have, you have that attitude, but you have it on more songs like I'm Right Next Door to Hell or Double Talk and Jive. Those are I think that that attitude or the thought of getting the ring, but it's it's that anger is directed out. When we're looking at the album from 21 years removed, you can see Axel almost firing off at the band. And of course, you have the last track on Use Your Illusion 2. You have My World, which rumor has it, most of the band didn't know existed until the record came out. Because, I mean, it's, a, it's an Axel solo track. Sure. For me, I think the biggest difference between the two records is I see Use Your Illusion 2 as almost a more serious record. They seem like they're they're writing more serious songs. The, the songs become longer in most cases. Whereas on number one, it, it, it almost seems like it's there's still so many remnants of that almost childish Axel. It almost seems like it's a more mature version of the band on the second record. I can see that. I, what I see on Use Your Illusion 1, though, is... Um, the, just the range of emotions on the songs that they have. And, and as I said before, I think because of that, it does have the complete package of, of angry songs, Right Next Door to Hell, uh, Double Talk and Jive. Those are angry. Obviously, Axel um, is, is pointing that directly at, you know, maybe a person or a group of people or some incidents in his life. For me, hearing those, talking about the situations that they were in, that they were living, I'm beating a dead horse. That can be applied in so many different areas, whether it is in their personal lives or in the music industry mm -hmm. as a whole. You know, I'm beating a dead horse about the music industry and where we're at and what's expected of us and how they got to such a, a, a place where they're at, where they had, you know, 50 people on their crew. I think you can draw a lot from the range of emotions and the range of the, the writing on the first album versus the second. If you look at Use Your Illusion 20 years later, and you look at the new smattering of rock and roll albums, in my opinion, the Use Your Illusion pair still holds up pretty well in, in every aspect. And, and you hear the, the cliche saying of this record or this album, this song is timeless. I really think that that can be applied to either one of these albums. When you hear those songs, that's something that I could hear right now, whether it's the the writing of the lyrics or the music themselves or just the playing of the, of the band members involved. I really think that it's, those are timeless songs and it was just unfortunately again another cliche saying but it was magical when those songs 
came together in the way that they did. And, and I think it's interesting because I do believe that at the time when those were released, Guns N' Roses were the biggest band on the planet. And for the quote unquote biggest band on the planet to put out such an ambitious project, two full albums, neither of which sound, you know, not, neither of which really sound that much like what they had built themselves mm -hmm. on. I mean, because the biggest single off of either of those albums is November Rain, which is insane to think that this, what is it, it's like nine minutes long, that sounds nothing like they'd done before. That, that the music buying public was so quick to embrace it and say, hell yeah, that, that's an amazing song. I think it showed the power that Guns N' Roses were able to wield at that time. It's funny that that was the most popular song because to me, if you look at both albums, I think uh, Sans maybe one or two song, maybe one song on each album, everything is solid. These two albums are grade A cuts every yeah. song. Yeah, I think, I think you can maybe say, this song on, on User Illusion 1 and this song on User Illusion 2, I could argue is filler, but outside of that, the, the density of the music they put out. In the end, User Illusion 2 did outsell User Illusion 1. Well, but I think it goes back to what you were saying and, and what we've been talking about. There are, there are two complete different feels, even though there's a lot of similarity between the two. I mean, that just shows right there. Mm -hmm. To what you were saying about the higher sales, uh, I've seen Slash in interviews say, uh, they were talking about the same thing, and his thinking was that his favorite album was one. He thought that the songwriting was stronger, and he thought just overall it had an overall bigger impact from the songs that they wrote on that one versus the other. So that's what we got, guys. Use your illusion one, use your illusion two. You should own both, and you should use them very often. Leave us a note down in the comments. Let us know which album you prefer, and tell us other double albums that you really love, and we'll see you guys again next time. <laughs>